this presentation is going to be about agentic RAG uh, with Llama index workflows. Um, yeah, high level uh, overview of the agenda is I'm going to cover what agentic RAG even is, uh, why it's necessary, and uh, some of the common techniques people have, have used to implement it. Um, I'm going to cover Llama index workflows, uh, which is a new addition to our core framework, uh, show you guys Llama Cloud and what it can do, and have a little short demo. Um, I can't really see the audience, but can I get a show of hands? Who, who knows what RAG is? Every, oh my, okay. That, I did not expect that many people, honestly, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Oops. So I have a couple slides about what is RAG, and the high level for those who didn't raise their hand is RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation, and is a technique that leverages custom data to enhance LLM output. Uh, I'm glad that you guys can see this diagram because it highlights exactly what RAG is. Given a, a simple user query, this is just like you asking a, a, a simple question to, let's say, a knowledge assistant or a chatbot. Um, we vectorize it, and then we run some similar research over a large corpus of data that you've ingested and shoved into your vector database. And it, that similar research will return some relevant contextual chunks that you can pass into your LLM prompt. Um, and then the, the large language model and all its, its great power will return, hopefully, a very accurate response. However, as uh, some of you might know who have implemented RAG systems, that there are some grave limitations, especially when trying to productionize these, these systems. Um, even though simple RAG has uh, reduced, the, reduced hallucinations, it hasn't gotten rid of them altogether, especially when there's more a different, different variety of data sources, uh, different types of documents, very complex queries. Uh, it's naive RAG tends to fall short. Um, and yeah, to the business, this results in limited time savings as well as uh, limited de decision-making enhancement. So not a really good uh, chatbot altogether. Yeah, so as we've come to realize over the last couple of years that chat, uh, complex use cases require much more data and much more advanced reasoning. Data comes from a variety of data sources in different formats, and it's oftentimes not a one-shot retrieval for all the context. You need to be able to uh, retrieve from multiple different sources, and you need to, be able to like, understand if the data is correct or not. And <clears throat> Yeah, these are some common limitations that people run into. So how can we go, go beyond this simple rag stack? Uh, in comes agentic rag. As many of you might know, the, the world is becoming ever more agentic. Um, yeah, as, as Chi was going, uh, talking about, yeah, agents are going to be a core piece of a lot of Gen AI applications. So agentic rag simply combines AI agents with, with a variety of rag techniques to enhance uh, the end, end reasoning and output. So as, uh, as, we try, as we begin to see more complex inputs, um, complex questions, we can leverage the reasoning capabilities of LLM to improve the overall query layer. So some common, <clears throat> common types of questions and inputs people see are summarization, research, multi-part questions, and that just the naive, naive rack systems are quite uncapable of handling. And we also want to generate more sophisticated forms of outputs. Um, a common, two common situations are uh, report generation and form filling. Let's say I have, um, let's say I want to do a report, a financial report over multiple industries through one prompt. Uh, yeah, how am I going to gather all the different types of information and give and generate a, a, a full report at the end? Um, yeah, so we've seen that there are a couple of common techniques that people can implement to, uh, <clears throat> to create an agent rack system. Listed here, we have query routing, query decomposition, structured data querying, uh, Crag and Heidi, and I'll cover a few of them that are more fu fundamental to agentic RAG. So the first one being query routing, and the, the principle is quite simple. You leverage an LLM to route a given input query to a variety of, of different subquery tools. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as, as shown in this diagram, uh, a simple example of query routing could be a given LLM call, it can see and can query um, a vector database or look at uh, your chat history or existing memory. Um, <clears throat> And we can continue to build on this, this idea with query decomposition. Given um, a, a, a multi-part question, for example, the LLM can break this up into different two simpler questions. Uh, for example, uh, what is Uber's revenue and headcount? And the LLM can break it up into what is Uber's revenue and what is Uber's headcount, and pass that into different function calls down the line. And yeah, I've listed a couple other examples, um, more, more complex examples. <clears throat> Another very common thing is structured data querying. So, uh, naive rag tends to, uh, the, the common implementation of naive rag is um, <clears throat> vectorizing a ton of unstructured data or in documents and shoving it into some database. But what if your data lives in SQL databases or CSVs or XMLs? 
when you kind of need a way to grab that data as well. So uh, I'm not sure many, uh, some of you might have heard of text to SQL, but this is a common, common very specific invitation of, of this technique. Yeah, so how does one build an agentic racism? This is the fun part, guys. We have uh, a recent addition to our core framework is Llama Index Workflows. Um, it is an event-driven, async-first framework for building AI agents. And it, it really only comes with a few, few building blocks, like these four primitives. We have steps, which are, general, which are just Python functions at the end of the day. Um, we have events, which uh, help orchestrate your entire agent or your workflow. Uh, we have tools, which can be querying tools, retrieval tools, or even just function tools from other agents. And, and context, which is another uh, concept about memory. Uh, one of the cool benefits of Llama Index Workflows is that it was built with productionizing in mind. So we've also have another thing called Llama Deploy, which helps you bring, um, <clears throat> helps you have a control plan to orchestrate different agents together or a single workflow and help orchestrate the entire thing in a dockerized way. It also has integrations with uh, observability tools like Arise Phoenix, you know, shout out the hosts of this event. And um, yeah, workflows are automatically instrumented. But yeah, so now we have the agent. How do we bring all the data together? So to even have a functioning, full, like very powerful rack system, it, it requires a ton, of, a ton of data. And we have a solution for that too. Uh, something that the team has been working really hard on is Llama Cloud. And the aim of Llama Cloud is to take care of all the hard parts of RAG. Um, <clears throat> one of the major benefits is the large scale data ingestion. So a lot of our customers have massive like S3 buckets or tons of files they want to they ingest. Llama Cloud takes care of it. Uh, we have a handful of different integrations, as you can see listed for data sources. You can choose any em uh, embedding model provider, OpenAI, Azure, et cetera. And we also have um, support for a variety of data syncs. So where, which kind of vector databases that you guys want uh, your data to go into. Tightly integrated with Llama Cloud is um, Llama Parse. Uh, there are a lot of different, <clears throat> um, I guess, like data extraction tools out there, but I think Llama Parse is, is the best. Uh, it supports a, a variety of file types, yeah, over 100 of them, and it excels particularly in um, tables, charts, and, and images. And yeah, this is a core piece of, of, of any RAG system to be able to like, accurately get, uh, get, get data from, from your documents. And yeah, we also know that RAG isn't a black box, so we provide full customizability um, in, in your retrieval system. So a variety of chunking strategies, hybrid search, re-ranking, multimodal indexing, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so we put these two pieces together, we get agentic rag, awesome. Um, and yeah, I got a quick demo for you all. So how do I like, fire this up? Yeah, yeah, this one. Can we? Uh, Nice. Yeah, so here is a sneak peek into Llama Cloud. It is currently only in, in beta. Uh, sorry for if you guys are on the wait list. We're going to be going GA pretty soon. And we have a couple of simple concepts right now. We have a parsing page, which is a sandbox to, to use Llama Parse. Um, you can pass in any kind of complex data and, uh, and give it some, some instructions and configuration. It will get all the data for you. Uh, but the more powerful piece that I can show here is, is the index creation workflow. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can select any kind of data source. We have even more data sources than just uh, file storage types. You can import things from, from like Confluence, Google Drive, and, and more. Um, you can choose a handful of data syncs. Those might be interesting to some people here. Uh, you can choose any embedding model provider. One thing that we released recently is multimodal indexing because a lot of documents have, have images that they want to search over. Um, and you can do that very easily in Llama Cloud. <coughs> and obviously parse, uh, parse settings, and you can set your own chunk settings here. So you have full customizability over exactly how your data is processed and ingested with, uh, with Llama Cloud. And let me go back here. So here's an example of uh, an index I created already. It includes a few data sources. To even further enhance retrieval capabilities, you can attach metadata to all your documents. This is a very common technique we've seen a lot of, a lot of people leverage. And you can also, <coughs> chat with it right out of the box. Yeah, nice. So we can take this and uh, these indexes, you can query on them as if they're an API uh, here. You can just yeah, use this, this library as offered by our framework in, in some kind of query engine tool in, in your workflows. And 
Yeah, so I have a, a notebook prepared for you guys. Oh, I have to run through these steps again. Okay, but the, the purpose of the notebook is to show you how to implement a very simple workflow. And I've chosen to show a text to SQL example and just show how, how easy it is to, uh, to, to implement with, with this product. Um, oh yeah, shout out Arise again. But yeah, so the first thing you want to do is create your retrievers. And these, uh, these are other packages in our inner llama index framework. So for this example, we have a SQL database retriever. So we initialize our SQL database, load it up with some, with some sample data, um, <clears throat> pass into a query engine, do the same thing for the llama cloud index. And then we can create our tools. So uh, yeah, I think people know what tools are. And <clears throat> this description here is used as a selector by the LLM to understand where to route a, a given query. And the next thing we do is create, uh, create our actual workflow. This is a very, I guess, basic example, but hopefully the, the idea is, is understood. Uh, we can create a handful of these different events, and events can route between different steps. Uh, events are just pydantic models, so you can attach different data to it if you want other downstream events um, to, to use, some, do some, do some data from previous steps. Um, you can pass in an LLM, you can pass in chat history, et cetera, and yeah. <coughs> Whenever for a step that has a start event, this indicates, I guess, the start of the workflow. Um, and then it, the downstream steps process uh, a given chat query, and it can figure out exactly what, uh, what tool to call, I guess, in this step specifically. Yeah, so in just a few lines, we can create a fully functioning uh, query router workflow. And here are some example queries. So, um, <clears throat> given something that's more quantitative, as you can see here in the logs, it'll, it'll do some work and figure out to, to use the SQL tool. Uh, yeah, I don't want to spend time like downloading the dependencies, so I'm not going to run these, but uh, essentially what will happen is if you provide a, a more qualitative question, it'll figure out that it needs to use the, the other, other tool, like the, the Llama Cloud Index tool. Um, but yeah, but we can take these ideas and extend it even further for more complex, complex use cases and systems. Uh, for example, if I want to implement a human in the loop system, all, you, all somebody might need to do is add another event at the start or somewhere in some other step to create a loop that somebody can, a human can intervene in. And yeah, this is, we think that these primitives are, um, the power of these primitives are really felt in more, more complex agentic systems.